about taking the city. So many of you would like to take the city of Montreal or Hell, take these cities for the Lord. Amen. So that's, that's God's commandment for us. And uh, so we, we can have good intentions and uh, a thing about, um, about taking the city. Uh, let me just go back. Uh, it, we, we asked for revival and we finished our present worship times saying send revival start with me and we can talk about revival we can dream about revival we can uh, hear prophecies about revival but uh, the thing is uh, if we don't listen to God we will never get there Amen. And, and I've seen people uh, praying for revival in their communities for uh, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years because I've traveled a lot, I've been to churches and I see people praying and they say, oh, the key is prayer, the key is this, the key is that. And then sometimes there's a, a church that comes and not, it's not even a church, it's more like a cult and they come and they just start conquering the city. And we've seen this happening in places in South America uh, that certain times the church is just praying for the city. And then you have a, a Christian cult that comes and, and uh, they open churches everywhere. Everybody's talking about them. And the church is asking, what, what's happening? You know, that's witchcraft. That's this, that's that. Sometimes it's not. It's the, you know, the Lord has different ways to achieve His goal. And, and uh, here in Montreal, we surely need a transformation. We need this society to change. We're seeing uh, horrible things uh, happening. And, and we're agents of transformation. So we're establishing God's kingdom. That's what we're learning. Uh, but we need to do s certain practical things. Of course, one of the things is prayer. Okay? Uh, and the Psalm 2a, it says, Ask me, and I will make the nations your heritage, and the ends of the earth your possession. So, are you asking? Are you asking? Or you just ask stuff for yourself? Nothing wrong about asking things for yourself. Nothing wrong in asking the Lord to bless you, to bless your family. You know, nothing wrong ab about that. If you do it, continue doing it. However, uh, our prayer shouldn't be just, you know, a, a selfish kind of prayer. Give me, give me, give me. But it should be also a bold prayer in which we ask for our region. And... Uh, and uh, uh, what I've seen also sometimes is that, you know, the Lord starts doing a move, a sovereign move, uh, brings a revival, and then you have uh, Christian people fighting one against another, you know, and criticizing and uh, bashing people and uh, saying, oh, no, that's not a church, oh, that's not a God, that's not... And, and as Christians, we should really protect our hearts and understand that God wants us first to ask Him. And He wants to give us more than, we, than what we can even ask or think. In Matthew 6, we have the, the Lord's Prayer that, that says, Our Father in Heaven, hallowed be Your name. Let me just put the slide over there. Our Father in Heaven, hallowed be Your name. Your kingdom come, Your will be done on earth as it is in Heaven. Your will be done where? On earth. On earth. As it is in Heaven. So, what's, what's God's will in Heaven? We need to know that because, because uh, yeah, what to establish his kingdom? Establish his kingdom, and we've been talking about it and talking about it. And some people are, are already asked me, "Are you guys connected to kingdom now? And uh, do you have uh, you know that that theology of the kingdom?" And then people start to ask because they watch us on YouTube and they send these uh, emails. And uh, and I've answered, "Yes, my theology is we need to establish the kingdom." You know, and we want it now. Now, if it's that theology from 20 years ago, I, I don't think so. But we really want to see the will of God established on earth as it is in heaven. That's why Jesus came. All right, so let's move a little bit further. Uh, how can we establish God's kingdom in our city? So if, we, if we're going to take the city, and today I want to share four things. It's not the only four things we need to do. But one of the things we need to do, we need to measure the land. So we need to uh, analyze uh, where we are. Uh, okay, we're going to see, these are the four things we're going to see. Spy the land. Then we're going to look at Nehemiah very briefly and about building walls in Jerusalem. And establish leaders with a heart of conquerors. So this is a, a strategy to conquer our city. 
and just pay attention. Uh, if you're taking notes, just keep taking notes and you can ask for the, the outline, I'll make it available. Available. So let's talk about number one, measuring the land. Now God told uh, Abraham to measure the land before he was given the order to possess it. So, and, uh, and this is, uh, of course, in the Old Testament, in Genesis 13, uh, 17, it says, Arise, walk through the length and the breadth of the land, for I will give it to you. So Abraham uh, moved his tent and came and settled by the oaks of Mamre, which, is our, which are at Abram, and there he built an altar to the Lord. So if you're going to conquer a place, you better know the place. You know, some people, some Christians talk about, oh, let's conquer our city. They, even, they don't even know their city. <coughs> and we, we tell them, oh, have you, uh, uh, have you ever went to, you know, to Park, uh, um, uh, you know, Mont Royal or Mont Royal, Mont Royal Park or whatever? Oh, I've never been there. So you're praying about conquering a city that you don't know? And we tell them, oh, uh, do you want to uh, come and let, let's go to the old port? Old, old port, where's that? <laughs> you <know? laughs> or, or you talk, oh, uh, we're doing services at, at uh, Longueuil, there's a university. Really, there's a university? Oh, I thought your, your meetings were in Sherbrooke, uh, you know, <laughs> close to the U.S. border. Because <laughs> people don't know the city. So, so length and, uh, and width uh, speaks about a total conquest. And we shouldn't be happy if we conquer just a little bit of the city. And, uh, and, and, and we need to know that nothing is too difficult or impossible to the Lord. Amen. Now, I'll be extremely happy if we had a church, let's say, with uh, 5,000 English-speaking people. Okay. And 50,000 French-speaking. Woo-hoo! Yeah? <laughs> and and uh, 10,000 Spanish-speaking. Yes, sir. And uh, Orientals and po- Polish also. You want yes, Polish? Yes, yes. So, so would that be great? Yes. We we'll say, oh, amazing, amazing! You know, what, what a, what a, what a church! You know, we're conquering the city. Not really, because as far as I, as I know, here in Montreal, we have about what two million people in the core of the island, and South Shore we have a million point five. So, the Greater Montreal, we have about five million people. So even if we had a church with 50,000 people, we hadn't conquered the city. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, so we need to, to really to uh, expand our mind. Now, let me talk about uh, number two, spying the land. So uh, uh, this, now this is not with Abram. Let's move a little bit further to the time of Moses. And uh, uh, they had to understand the geography of the place they were about to conquer. And uh, they had to evaluate the geography of the place. So, so they, not, not only they measure the land, and when, when we measure a place, it, it's good to have a map. I remember when we were planting churches in the, in the Toronto area, I had this map, and I would pinch flags where we started churches. And uh, it was great to see uh, all of those flags. Then the, the small groups, we started to pinch another color of, uh, of little flags. It was amazing. And then there was a season that the Lord wasn't bringing so much growth. So we decided to, to pinch flags in the places that we prayed and we anointed with oil. So we will gather at the church to pray and we'll send a group of people to a street, another group to another street. And I gave them big bottles of oil. So they were just, you know, sometimes through the, 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 open the window of the car just anointing the place <laughs> and, and just going to the places and mapping the place. And we knew here they sell drugs. So in that place, we're going to do warfare against that spirit of drugs. Now this place was obvious, prostitution. So let's address this issue and fight against prostitution. And we did some, uh, what, what some people call spiritual mapping, which is very, very important to do. If we're going to conquer the land, now let's, let's read the scripture, Moses, uh, on, on Numbers 13, verse 17. Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, Go up into the Negev and go up into the hill country and see what the land is and whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak whether there are few or uh, many and whether the land that they dwell is in good is in good or bad and whether the cities that they dwell are in camps or strongholds and whether the land is rich or poor and whether there are trees in it or not be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land now the time 
was for the season uh, of the first grapes. So uh, we see that the 12 spies went there and we know that only two of the spies entered the land. But they brought a full report of what they see. But see the amount of detail that was asked. Is it poor? Is it rich? Uh, 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 are they working the land? Is it abandoned? Uh, and wh where do they live? Do they live in strongholds? Do they live in, uh, uh, in, the, in the fields? You know, bring the full report. So that's what they went there. And uh, at the end, they concluded, well, they were really strong. There's giants there. No, we cannot do it. So we know what happened. We're not going to enter into that. But just uh, understand, they had to spy the land. So we need to know about our region. What's going on here? And, and many times, Christians are completely ignorant of what's going on in the city. Completely ignorant. Uh, uh, for instance, do you know we have a good soccer team here? Yes. yes. They won yesterday. Yes. 3 2 against uh, Salt Lake City. Yeah. We beat the Mormons. <laughs> so, uh, so and, uh, and you know, sometimes those games, I remember last year there was a game with 64,000 people. A soccer game with 64,000 people in North America. <laughs> You know, no other team on the, on the MLS gathered 64,000 people in the stadium. Montreal was the only one. So that, this is just a fact about uh, Montreal. Of course, we have other sports teams and other things going on. Uh, do you know we have something called uh, the Jazz Festival? Yes. Uh, have you ever went there? Yes. I go there, and I try to go there every year. And, uh, and I love it, just walking there, seeing all those people, and, uh, and looking at... Aretha Franklin's coming. Aretha Franklin? Wow, that's great. We always have Christian uh, musicians coming, always, you know? Even if they're not, uh, you know, the Christian from Christian labels, but we have Christian people coming. Stevie Wonder, yeah. you know, he's a Christian, and, and we have uh, all sorts of different uh, people coming. So those events happen in the city, and we should know about those events. We should know what's going on. And, and uh, we need to develop a strategy also, if possible, to do some outreach on, the, on these events. And, and sometimes people don't really care. You know, in Ganawaki, we, we try to reach the, the city, and uh, the last two powwows, I've been there with a tent. I've pitched a tent, and, uh, and we were there just giving Bibles. We were with the Gideons last year, and the Gideons said they never gave so many Bibles in, uh, in the Montreal area. And uh, it, was, it was a great thing, you know. The church didn't get involved, which was uh, you know, uh, more myself, my wife, Marlon, and uh, a few people that went there, and Sandra. And uh, we had a great time there, you know, just, uh, uh, just uh, giving uh, away some invitation, doing some stuff. We need to go where the people are. And some people say, you go to a powwow, don't you know that's witchcraft? Well, it's also a lot of fun, you know, they're, they're dancing, and, uh, and <laughs> I, I remember they were dancing, and, uh, and then everything stopped, and they asked, what happened, what happened? And a feather fell on the floor, so the witch doctor had to come, and they do, woo, that, that dance, you know, to, because they, they had to pick up the feather, and they had to do some witchcraft, because if they don't do that witchcraft move, they say someone is going to die. And so I was watching that, and, and uh, you know, I'm a Christian person, so I'm there. They told me this, oh, really? And I just said, in the name of Jesus, I, I bind that spirit of witchcraft and Amen. spirit of death. Yeah. Lord, get these people free. Amen. But if we don't know the land, if we don't go to, to, to places, we're ignorant about what's going on. Amen. And we should have a clear uh, notion of where we are. All right, so let's uh, move now, centuries later. Jerusalem was established, then they were conquered, and uh, it was kind of the state of Montreal. You know, Montreal was built to be the Vatican of uh, North America. So at the time, uh, the, at the time that, uh, uh, you know, Canada was established, a lot of these people that, uh, that have the names in streets and all that, you know, they were either Christian or the founders of the city, that, uh, and some of them were really men of God. You know, Jacques Cartier, all, all those people, they're missionaries, they pray for people, they lay hands on people and pray for healing. Mm -hmm. It's in history books, you know, of course, you will not learn this in, the, in school now, but that's the reality. So, 
Montreal was, was a, a city that was founded to be a Christian place. So that's why you have all those names of saints everywhere. And people say, oh, it's because people are uh, idolatrous from the evil Roman Catholic Church. <laughs> Come on, we need to be more open-minded. We need to be more open-minded. What they came to establish here in Montreal was a center to train missionaries, and it was supposed to be a Christian city. Now we're very far away from that, aren't we? <laughs> so if you want to see sin, go to Saint, Saint Catherine. If you want to get drunk, go to Saint Jean Baptiste. <laughs> so if you want, to, so so all evil things. If if you want prostitution, go to. I'm not going to sell. sell that. <laughs> but uh, it's the reality. You have all these names of saints, and they're identified with places of sin. If you want to buy drugs, you go to Saint whatever. So everything is corrupted. Swear words are uh, words from the Bible or from the Roman Catholic uh, um, uh, liturgy. And, and so, so, uh, so this is the condition of Montreal. We need to take back the city. Amen. Now, in Jerusalem that happened, and for 70 years they've lost control of the city. The walls were uh, destroyed. And, and so God uh, sent um, uh, Nehemiah to also to spy the land and it says that in Nehemiah 2 11 I went to Jerusalem was there three days then I arose in the night and a few men me and I told no one what my God had put in my heart to do for Jerusalem there was no animal with me but the one on which I rode and went out by night by the valley gate to the dragon spring to the dun gate and inspected the walls of Jerusalem that were broken down and its gates has, had been destroyed by fire. You see, Dr not dungeons and dragons, but they have dung and dragons. <laughs> <clears throat> then I went out on the fountain gate to the king's pool and there was no room for the animal that was under me uh, to pass. So there was rubble everywhere. Then I went up uh, in the night uh, by the valley, inspected the wall, turned back and entered by the valley gate and so returned and the officials did not know where I had gone or what I was doing and I had not yet uh, told uh, the Jews, uh, the priests, the nobles, the officials and the rest who were there. One more verse. Uh, then I said to them, uh, you see the trouble uh, we are in, how Jerusalem lies in ruins and which its gates burned. Come let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer suffer the Rison. So the walls were destroyed and he examined truly in secret, so this wasn't a public thing, this was a, something very well prepared, but there was a strategy to uh, reorganize things. I love this book of Nehemiah, and just very briefly, I want to tell you that Jerusalem had uh, ten gates, and, uh, and, uh, and these ten gates are very important for us as Christians if we want to rebuild or, or take the city back. And, um, uh, you can find this in Nehemiah, and, and again, I can post the, this, uh, this outline. And uh, only here, uh, you know, I have a message that, uh, that goes, a uh, really extensive message just on these gates. And uh, you have the gate, uh, the sheep gate, which is uh, a type of salvation. So, so uh, all these gates have to do with something that we as, as church, as Christians, have to do. So number one was salvation. The second gate is the fish gate that talks about um, evangelism, then the old gate or the uh, Yeshana gate, the old truth or uh, the doctrines, the, the valley gate which is ministering to others, you know, we have the mountain, we have the valley, the dung gate, and the dung gate talks about holiness, of getting rid of, uh, of everything that, uh, uh, that is, uh, you know, Paul said, uh, you know, all, all these things I consider them as dung, uh, so I can win the Lord. The fountain gate, which is a type of the Holy Spirit. The water gate, which, which has nothing to do with Richard Nixon. But, but it's, it's, it's the, the Bible, the Word of God. They have the, the, there's the horse gate, and the horse talks about God's judgment to the world. The east gate, the second coming of Jesus. You know, we know that when Jesus comes, He will be seen on the east gate. And the must or the appointment gate, which talks about inspection in God's judgment. So it's very, very interesting that we understand that this is what they were doing. They were building a wall, but there were gates. So, uh, uh, and when we build God's kingdom and we're building Passion Canada, we need to have this vision. We're going to conquer this city. 
And God can open doors in ways we, can, we don't expect. You know, He gives us divine appointments. He opens opportunities. And He knows better than us. So, so, so what we need to do is to establish things and we're in this very important stage of planning. That's why we've been here and we spent a few months just planning and talking. Uh, uh, you know, we had discussions here. You remember last year? So we had a lot of discussions. Some went on the wrong uh, way. But, but we, we need to have this season of planning, of getting to know each other. And then we have our goal. We, we want to have all these gates because it's not just a matter of doing services and, you know, and preach the gospel. We need to have a very uh, definite plan. And then finally, the last thing I want to talk, it's about having leaders with the heart of conquerors. So we need to have it in our hearts. That's where passion comes. You know, if we, if, we, uh, if we are going to conquer the city, we need to, to have the treats of a conquering leader. And I, I'm going just to mention uh, four of these treats. The, the number one, you need to be free. You cannot conquer if you're in bondage. And, and, uh, and some, some, they say, oh, I'm free, Jesus made me free. But they have mental bondage. They, they have religious bondage. And uh, they have uh, also sometimes mental limitations. And they think, oh, uh, you know, we have uh, had churches here for 80 years and it's always a small flock. You know, the mentality of the small flock cannot be in the heart of a conqueror. So we need to be free from these things. You know, financial bondage, all sorts of things. I know sometimes we go through financial difficulties. It happened to me many times in my life. But I'm not in bondage. No, I know that the Lord will bless me. Amen. Amen. Even now that we're looking for a, a, a place, you know, the Lord can bless us. Yes. It's, it's, it, we, we don't have enough money to, to buy places, to buy uh, buildings and stuff. But praise the Lord, you know, the Lord is preparing us. Amen. You know, that's why in this season, you know, every week now I'm trying to prepare our sound system and everything because we want to do great things for the Lord. We want to do it with excellence. So we don't buy cheap stuff. We don't, we don't buy stuff in gold. But we, for our Lord, we buy the best. And, and, and we try to, to get free of a mentality of poverty. Of course, if we're going to be conquerors, we need to be born again. <laughs> and born again, uh, uh, people that are born, born again, they're ambassadors of Christ. And Pastor Louis has been talking about this. We, we, we're, uh, we represent the king. We're ambassadors. You know, I've been following in the United States this great debate because of the ambassador that was killed in Benghazi, in Libya. They're still talking about it eight months later. And, uh, and some people say, who cares? You know, let's move forward because uh, no, this is in the past. But there's a group of people that say, no, no, we want to know exactly the circumstances. Why did we allow our ambassador to be killed? And there's a huge... If, if this was the time of Richard Nixon, he will be worse than the Watergate that we talked about. Uh, but, but it's a big debate because they let the ambassador die. They didn't send reinforcements. And, uh, and, and so th this is really, really bad for the U.S. administration. Now, in God's kingdom, uh, our God will never allow the ambassador to be killed. <clears throat> he will send reinforcements. He will send God's angels. So we just need to have the attitude of the ambassador. He's there to protect you. You're an ambassador. And uh, two more things, then we're going to have a word of prayer. Uh, keep uh, uh, in memory God's promises. You know, Abraham had the promise about Canaan. And so he left his homeland to conquer, not to be a slave. You know, he lived in a, in a, in a place in, in Babylon. So that, that's where uh, Abraham came from. He came from Babylon. Uh, and the Lord said, you know, leave your father's house. Uh, leave uh, th that spirit and go to the place that I will show you. And he went there with the intention of establishing something even better than Babylon. And there's something better than Babylon. It's called Jerusalem. It's called, it's, it's the, the, land that, the land of the promise. So in, in a sense, when we come to Christ, we all come from a past of sin and we're moving towards the direction that God has for us. And sometimes we're not seeing things. It's like we hit the dead end and we're thinking, uh, you know, I don't know what I'm doing here in Montreal. I don't know what I'm doing here in my job. I, 
what shall I do? But we need to follow the lead of the Holy Spirit. Because God placed you here in this season for a purpose. There's a purpose. There's a reason. And you need to be reminded of God's promises. And finally, this is very, very important. Break with the past. You know, Abraham had to break with family traditions. In fact, the, the, the Hebrew word, when God said, come out of the, your father's house, it's come out of the spirit of your father's house. If you study in detail, it's so interesting sometimes to study the, the original languages because you get all these pearls, you know, of revelation. The Lord told him, you need to come out of that spirit of, your, of, of that father's house. And many times, the reason why we, we're not able to succeed, it's because we're under the, the influence of a, of a bad uh, spiritual um, entity. So we need to come out of there. Some people are in church and they think, oh, I'm in church, you know, I don't know how things are going badly because I go to church and I, I pray and I go there every Sunday. Who is your spiritual authority? Mm. You need to have a spiritual authority. Certain people in the Bible, they were directly under the authority of God. We're not those people. We're not those people. Some people say, oh, I only answer to God, I don't submit to anyone. You know, you're not a prophet from the Old Testament. You're not, you know, a, just a loose cannon out there. The Lord called us to be under authority and covering. We need to have... There are seasons sometimes when someone is called to serve full time. There are seasons that may happen that the Lord is your covering. But otherwise, we need to have the right covering. Because we have no covering, we're under uh, attack. And, and, and we need to get to a point in our life in which we, we, we think about our life, where we are, and we know God has been the best for us. How, how am I going to get there? You need to break with your past. You need to break with your past. So when we start something fresh like Passion Canada, we don't want to bring all the baggage, you know, from all the churches that we came from <laughs> or from, from our past. No, that, that needs to stay behind. Wouldn't you like, you know, to, to get enough money to buy a new house with new furniture? Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. Someone will give you cash money and you buy a new house and new furniture. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. And then, then you say, oh, but you know, I want my old mattress. <laughs> I, I want to bring my old rugs. <clears throat> Listen, if, uh, if you built brand new and you were given that uh, uh, possibility, you may have, you know, uh, emotional attachments to things of the past. But Christians cannot have emotional attachments to the past if they, they're about to conquer something. If you want... The, the, the new and the best uh, things that God has for you, if you need to get the new wine, you cannot uh, remain attached to the old wine. So this is a very, very, very important uh, uh, point. And my last thing, my last verse, Romans 8, and in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. And, and when, uh, when we read this Bible uh, passage in Romans 8, it talks about Many things that happen through life, you know, adversity, uh, trials, tribulation, uh, all, all stuff that happens in life. And then he concludes by saying, but in all these things, we are more than conquerors. And he doesn't say, I am. He says, we are. And, and, uh, and because he says we are, he's talking to the church. Remember, we're here to establish the kingdom. We're here to defeat the kings and to establish God's kingdom. We're here to conquer the city. We're ambassadors of Christ. We are more than conquerors. We're not only conquerors. We are more than conquerors. We're above any conqueror of this earth. Amen? Let's give that a block.